My name is Kimberly Boyd. I am a professional dancer and a choreographer, which means that I enjoy making dances about things. In science, we're concerned with processes and whether there is a logical order and sequence to the events that we're studying. In dance, in order to make a dance, there is a logical order sequence to that process as well. So in the classroom, we get up and have an experience through our bodies through which we can take a look at something like a growth cycle. So in my warm up with the students, we get to explore with our bodies how to move safely and responsibly uh, in our own personal space, exploring directions. We take a look at what's going on in the growth cycle of a particular plant or animal and let that inform more creative choices. How might you move your body in such a way that you can show that you are starting out small and getting taller or larger. Sometimes we are in still shapes and sometimes there is motion and there's typically a direction to how we move. Are we growing quickly? Are we going slowly? Is it an explosive movement? Is it one that has stops and starts? How big does it grow? Does one thing grow larger than another? with our body. So we can see pretty quickly how we might use our bodies to help illustrate that phenomena. And when we do that, we then have a sense of, well, what is it like for something to grow? Sometimes it can be challenging to convince students that they should read something or study something for longer than a minute. But if we are creating, if we are making a dance, it makes sense that, no, we have to go back and then we're going to have some discussion about, is it this way or is it that way? Well, what does the science say? And we are, in fact, in a rehearsal process. That's a word that we would call it in dance when we go over one idea again and again and again, um, not to simply regurgitate fact um, unconsciously, but to go back and to refine the learning. In fact, what we're doing is creating a pathway for remembering the cycle and learning more about what's happening in that cycle and then often finding that there is something really important about what we've learned by moving our bodies. It is an opportunity to get students working together collaboratively. When we make dances together, we're working in small groups, we have to figure out how to negotiate, we have to figure out how to compromise, we have to figure out how to share ideas, we have to figure out how to, okay, I had an idea, it didn't get used this time, you know, and to be okay with that. And these are enormous, enormous skills that we need in the world of work. Doing this kind of work is within everyone's reach. The teacher doesn't have to necessarily be in it doing it with the students all the time. The teacher just sets the context for the student's discovery and then monitors in the same way that you would put students in small groups and have them work together, check in on their process, and uh, get them to talk about their results. Certainly as we head into the 21st century more deeply, what we're hearing is we need people to be able to work together collaboratively, peacefully, honorably in small groups for short periods of time. And I don't know very many opportunities that we have to practice that unless you are on a sports team, but this is really different from that as well, to get together and to share your creativity but also your intellect and to find that there is an important intersection between creativity and critical thinking.